So today I'm doing the unveiling of a couple of the Fig Hunter's most coveted variety figs. One of them is known as the Amon Citron um, Fig Hunter variety known as 455. And the second one I'm going to be opening here behind me is the Fig Hunter Bram Boyce, which is the Fig Hunter variety um, numbered known as 280. I'll tell you a little bit about them in just a minute, but I grafted them about three weeks ago onto my Hilda's Honey Green this is my favorite it is the first that i've eaten as a child and i have continuously propagated and just check out the flavor and the deliciousness and the colors of it as you can see with all the new growth you're going to experience fruit at every single leaf if you're taking care of it the right way and feeding it with the ivory organic all-purpose fertilizer that offer your plants all the six macronutrients plants need be sure to feed your plants and they'll be sure to feed you Fig. This is a family favorite I grew up with over 30 years ago and I've been sharing cuttings off of this as has the Fig Hunter for the last almost seven years now with our annual free fig cutting giveaway that we do every February 1st and it runs month long while supplies last. And again, we grafted this onto the Hilda's Honey Green Fig serving as the rootstock and starting with the Amon Citron, I just want to share with you um, how we can open this up. As you can see, it's wrapped in plastic. And underneath it, we added a slightly damp paper towel. One of the reasons that grafts fail is due to um, desiccation. They simply dry out. So you graft the two unions and the scion, which is the desired flavor that you graft on there, dries out. And so to overcome that, a method I've been using for almost 30 years as well is to simply add a moist paper towel and to basically protect that scion wood until the healing happens between the cambium layers of the scion and the rootstock. And so this one here is the Amon Citron Fig Hunter variety. And the second one I want to share with you is over here, over my right shoulder. And let's open this one up as well. I'm carefully just trying to protect the tip as much as I can and I'll um, finish the wrapping later. And just want to get this exposed and i wish you can see what i've got over here i mean this thing is so vigorous this one here is the framboise variety and it is doing so well check out how just check out how beautiful that is check out just midway down you can see it's also rooting um again due to the moisture in there and even some of these like white dots on here known as lenticles those are all potential roots that could be formed but in fact it did push out one we can simply remove that root. That's not the goal is to be rooting. Um, the goal is to accomplish the successful grafting of the two. Let me start off by first sharing why I grafted this particular framboise onto my Hilda's Honey Green Fig, which is another delicious fig variety. The reason I brought it was I had the privilege of also tasting it at one of the Fig Hunter events um, last summer. And this here is a description I want to share with you that you can find at the FigHunter.com website, the link of which I'll put in the video description below. And it reads as follows. The Frambrois is a stunning island coastal fig that thrives on an open hillside. The mother tree has the ability to adopt to both warm and summers and cool, foggy, wet winters. Savor in every bite of this incredible flavor reminiscent of spoons full of raspberry jam with the seeds intact. This is a beautiful, tasty addition to your fake collection today. So here we go. And I'm just going to finish unveiling this grafted variety. So if you come around back here, you can see. So I'm hoping you can see that the cambium layers have healed very well in this area over here. And that's between, again, the sun and the rootstock, as well as down in this lower part as well indicated by like that little green spot. It's actually the cambium layers between the scion and that rootstock creating new, basically bark, um, but that's all part of the heel that's happening. A little background, the Amon Citron is, it's also again referred to as the Fig Hunter variety 455. And you can read this again at the FigHunter.com website. And it reads, it has a fruity sweetness with citrus notes that become more forward as you get closer to the eye of the fig. Amon Citron has been a Burke family farm favorite since we first discovered it and has previously sold to restaurants in Napa Valley and local farmers markets. And I can tell you as one of the distributors of these Fig Hunter varieties, 
it is again one of the most coveted most first to go varieties of figs and i'm excited to share and something i learned in just recent weeks is that the burke family farm will be making a lot of their fig varieties available um, as rooted fig trees in the very near future maybe as early as the summer of 2024. So one of the most important things to do when you actually have a successful graft is to remove the sucker growth below it. The rootstock will always choose itself over the wounded grafted wound. And so we're going to remove the sucker root growth from the rootstock. And that's going to drive all of the nutrients and resources into the grafted wood. And let me show you what the grafted side looks like over here. The healing that's happened between the rootstock, and the scion. What we're going to do now is add the Iberorganic 3-in-1 Plant Guard, which is an organic Army certified protection, which um, protects your plants from damaging summer sunburn and insects and rodents. The primary goal in this situation is to protect the still young and tender and very much exposed to disease and pest wound of the grafted area and we're basically sealing it in a product that dries on porously compared to latex and tar based products that trap moisture and contribute to underlying rot this is a much healthier application that includes the benefits of castor and cinnamon and clove and garlic and peppermint and rosemary and spearmint which offer the anti-insect anti-rodent and also anti-fungal antibacterial um, benefits and so we're basically sealing both sides of the grafting wound and we can even go up the scion to offer that wood now the protection until the leaves grow and and offer protection to the stem from sunburn in addition to and a lot of people use like for example parafilm this does have the benefits of also serving as an anti-desiccant. They're trying to keep the plant from drying out, and this is gonna help with that too. And there we go, and we'll leave those leaves alone. And here we are now with the Fambrois graft, and we're gonna be protecting those wounds as well, like so, and we're gonna go all the way up the stem too, like so. So notice that I'm leaving the twine on the plant. Again, you can see between the scion wood and the rootstock, Again, this has got quite a bit of establishment of the healing between the cambium layers, which is that green layer underlying the bark. You can see all of that wonderful healing that's happening. Again, we're now going to protect those surfaces from pests and disease like so. And even these pruned areas can all be sealed. Most research will say, again, if you're using a latex or tar-based product, do not seal them as, again, it traps moisture. This product does not. It dries on porous resulting in a much healthier prune seal than the alternative products out there. Within a few weeks, just check out how happy these grafts are. As the grafts continuously grow, you may want to add some support between the scion and the rootstock, as I've done here using a bamboo stick and some cotton twine. And basically, again, continuously reapplying the products making sure that those wounds remain sealed so it doesn't become an invitation for pest and disease to enter and shorten the life of my graft. This one over here is the Martinica Ramada, a variegated variety of fig, which should be fruiting this year, as you can um, see by the variegation that's are even in the bark, um, highlighted by the yellow and green and brown um, stripes. To my friend Daniel Chen, this one here is a variety we grafted last year known as the Tia Pena. And Tia Pena is now, if we follow it, is now fruiting right here. And this is the Bravo crop, which is the first crop. All of the main crop will happen on the new growth, which has just started a few weeks ago.
you've enjoyed these lessons brought to you by Ivory Organics, be sure to give us that thumbs up, share us with your gardening friends and family, and most importantly, keep growing with Ivory Organics and wishing you all happy gardening.